The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science: storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is hi. I'm Helen. I teach Year One and Two. Hi, I'm Rob. I teach in a small village school in Buckinghamshire, and I teach at Key Stage Two. And today we are exploring what science we can teach with a folk tale from China. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, EpicTales.co.uk, for Big Man Drum. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you're an epic educator, as of 30th of September 2022, you'll also get the story as a paperback, gloriously illustrated by Winnie the Witch's very own Corky Paul. Don't worry if you missed that though, as you can order the book from any bookshop, including Amazon. And epic educators can access the ebook and full audio book through the Epic Tales app. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Helen, Rob, Nightchin, and the Gorillas. And well, as we often find with stories involving animals, especially animals that you don't tend to find in our native country, at least of the United Kingdom, there are some rather obvious science links coming out. Have either of you gone with those obvious science links? I mean, you couldn't pass up the opportunity to investigate gorillas, really, because <laughs>、um, animals, and especially big animals, fascinate children, don't they? There,、mm-hmm. and they actually they fascinate teachers when you begin to actually look into them and their habitat and the way they live. And as I talked about in the maths podcast, how big they are, you know, the dimensions. Yeah,、um, they're just fascinating. Children love them. You certainly、just. seem to be fascinated by them, so I imagine I know. that is going to spill over into your children. I know. I think it started because we decided <laughs> because.、Um, We were going to record this podcast, and then I saw this.、Um, I think I referred to it back in the math podcast. I saw this this YouTube video of this gorilla. I was like,、mm. yes, we have to find out more. Go on then, Helen. Where are your science links for ages four to seven? With the the early years and key stage one science curriculum, there's a lot about animals, about their features, about their adaptations, their diet, their what do you call it? Do you call it categorization? Classification. Classification. That's the one. And I think with any learning, the more that you can weave in these terms across all your topics across the year, the better. So, carnivores, herbivores, omnivores, mammals, reptiles. The more you can bring those in across a year,、mm. rather than just doing a topic on what is a mammal, what is a. If you bring it in across the year, the children start to embed that knowledge. Yeah. So, looking at a gorilla. Using all of that language and all of those different categorizations or、well, classifications, classifications. <laughs> that was it. I said the wrong one again. They mean the same thing, though, don't they? <laughs> yes, it's fine. It's just the difference between <laughs> science literacy and normal everyday literacy. <laughs> exactly. I think you're right, though. The 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 evidence that we've got for just how young learners are absolutely fascinated by animals is that story I gave back when we were talking about the PSHE about how. Most Most of the versions of this story that even I knew、yeah. before, it's monkeys that、um, pick up Nai Chin, and you know it took a, a child to shout out、yeah. and say to me, "Well, if they're hitting their chests, they wouldn't be monkeys; they'd be gorillas." They pick up so much information about the natural world, don't they? It must absolutely fascinate and delight them, and come out with things yeah that adults don't necessarily know and words、mm. that we don't necessarily know just because they are so interested in it. Exactly, and that's where learning I think is very powerful. As we always talk about, learning through stories is powerful because children are interested in stories. Children are engaged in stories,、mm-hmm. and so the more you can get children engaged in what you're teaching them. The more, hopefully, they will learn. When you're exploring so, classifications, would you look at primates? I don't know. Actually, again, I've never really taught gorillas and others. It might be、What? something that we're looking more at with ages seven to eleven. Generally,、Rob. yeah. Yeah, he's he's、Generally. waving at us <laughs> for yeah exploring the connections between apes、mm. and and humans. I guess that's going to be a, a, a topic eventually, isn't it? Yes. Definitely, but we'll we'll come back to that one. Yeah, you've、right? you, you kind of <laughs> stolen my thunder. Oh no! 
<laughs> well, no, we, we, we've set you up now. We've oh, created yeah. some yeah. suspense. People are going to be <laughs> yes. desperate to hear your <laughs> primate learning objectives. But for now, and we'll stick with the ages four to seven. What else have you got for us, Helen? Oh, just quickly, the gorillas activity I was talking about just has a nice link with some literacy activities we talked about in terms of okay. describing gorillas. Yes, um, yeah. So they all, all link in together. So when you've looked at the gorilla's features, adaptations, mm. why they have them, and then you can do the description, the description activity as well. I wonder then whether you could take that description activity in two different directions and have one mm. where they are describing the gorillas in let's call it poetic language and another one where they're yeah. describing it in scientific language so that they can start to see the difference between the different styles of writing. That would be really interesting, actually, particularly, um, you know, going into year two, I think that would be really important distinction. A ages six and seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, a really important distinction to make. So you could almost have them doing the more poetic one first before they've learnt all of the actual language you know the scientific language and the adaptations mm. um so you do the purely adjective based descriptive language first and then you try another one the same context mm -hmm. in that they are writing a description for the rich man about what he might encounter but they're applying then the knowledge that they've learnt in science. Yeah, exactly. My next activity is around materials because I, I like the idea of children creating a large, shiny, sparkly jewel of some kind. <laughs> and more shiny, I would say, because when we look at properties of materials, you could even be more specific and say it's going to be like a, you know, a reflective surface on this mm. jewel. So children have to explore the different properties of materials and which ones are the shiniest or the most reflective. And they do a little investigation into that first before, of course, creating some jewels. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that would be where I'd go with science in this story. So you still come away with jewels from your yes. learning outcomes with this story. Yes. Jewels go a long way. And they're, they're a girl's best friend as well, I hear. Are they? Well, diamonds are. Oh, are they? Yeah, just I just I think I'm more of a magpie. I just like shiny things. <laughs> Sh shiny treasure. I have a pot full of shiny gems that I use in my class for various <laughs> things. There we go. So diamonds don't win you over, but a good shiny things. <laughs> a good bit of fool's gold would. <laughs> uh, anything you want to magpie there yourself, Rob, for ages seven to eleven? <laughs> yes. One of the ideas you were kind of thinking about classifying different primates is definitely an idea that I would take with upper key stage two. So kind of ten to twelve year olds. Looking at the Gosh, it's such a surprise hearing you say that. I wasn't expecting <laughs> this one at all. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> out of the blue, <laughs> we have to start looking at different scientists who've had uh, a big impact. And one of the scientists we mm. can look at is Darwin, who came yes, yeah. along with the theory of evolution. So, look at how the different types of primates are adapted to their habitats and where they live. Mm. what features do they have that are specific to them which features do they have which are like a common primate species mm -hmm. if you had time you could also start looking at the link between primates and very early humans mm -hmm. so you can see the potential links between us and the gorillas who helped my chin. One of which is going to be the fascination with drumming, I think, because drumming was almost definitely the first music that was ever invented. Yes. Yes. The other idea I had is a bit curveball, but it's... Oh, we like these from you, Rob. <laughs> yes. It's to do with forces. Okay. I was thinking okay. about some of the different textures that my chin comes across. So whether it's the soft, mossy bed that he's on, or whether it's the leathery hands of the gorillas or the ground. And then I'd start thinking about the different kinds of forces that, like mainly friction, but can be applied on these and how, let's so say, do an investigation about how these different materials produce different amounts of friction say so, okay was it a good thing that they were leathery hands that were moving him through the forest oh, i see yeah would it have been better if they had slippery mossy hands would that have been mm. would it have been better mm. or would it have been worse so things like that certainly might have made a difference for the rich man yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah if he had his driving gloves on he might have been okay <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so just starting to think about how different forces are applied and say, use the story, kind of pause it there once you come across the different feelings, the different materials, and then mm. say, okay, if we were talking about friction, what would you expect to find out from these different things? Wonderful. 
That's all we have time for in this episode, folks, and indeed this week. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world, so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. We'll be back next week so Nightchin and the Gorillas can help us plan lessons in geography, art, design and technology, music and computing. Right now, though, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. soon.